Well, welcome to Yearbook Week 2, and this week we're interviewing the fellas. Let's give it up for the uh, senior guys. Let them know how much you love them. <laughs> Let them know. Let them know the love. Let them know the love that they may know they're loved. All right, so most of you probably know these guys up here, but if you do not, we're going to go around, and I'm going to have you guys introduce yourselves. Give us your name. Don't give us your grade, because that's obvious. Give us what school you go to, and then give us what... So what celebrity would play you in a movie? How about that? What celebrity, what actor or actress would play you in a movie? Actress? Oh, hey, whatever, dude. Right. Um, I'm Dawson Tucker. I go to Mount Perrin. Uh, celebrity. I want to say, like, Krim, Chris Hemsworth, because, like, that's who I want to be depicted as, you know? Uh-huh. He's a good-looking okay. dude. Good looking okay. Dude. Uh, Chris Hemsworth. Yeah, I like Emma Stone, because, like, look at the resemblance. But, like. <laughs> Hi, I'm Dalton. I go to Kennesaw Mountain, yeah, and probably Angelina Jolie, because, <laughs> like, she tries to have my body, but, like, she doesn't. Oh, come but, on. Like, all right, all right, next, oh, okay. next, 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 next. Dude, don't get me in trouble tonight, all right? <laughs> oh, okay, go ahead, Connor. Hi, my name is Connor Suttle. I go to Hillgrove High School, and uh, um, who would play you in the movie? I'd be Chris Tucker. <laughs> okay, Chris okay. Tucker, yeah. Wait, you would be Chris Tucker or Chris Tucker would play you? No, I'd be Chris Tucker. <laughs> yeah. yeah All right, I like that. That's a good answer. Uh, I'm Cal. I also go to Hillgrove High School. Woo. And um, I would probably say John Krasinski. John Krasinski. Okay, that's a good pick. That's a great pick. Ethan. Uh, hey, I'm Ethan. Go to Hillgrove. Uh, that's not fair. It's like <laughs> I know, right? You're outnumbered. Uh, probably Matthew Lillard. He played Shaggy in that movie from 2002. <laughs> what? Wait, the guy from Scooby Doo? Is that like one of your favorite movies or something? Yeah. Is that in your top five? Yes. <laughs> oh gosh. Wow. Okay. I could say I'm surprised, but that would be a lie. All right. So. These guys have been picked because you guys have had a long run in Sublime. You guys are awesome. Uh, I've gotten to know you guys over the last year, and I like you guys. I'm just going to be honest about it. So we're going to get into some questions. We're going to get into some questions. And uh, what we hope, if you were in here last week, what we hope your book is for you guys is an opportunity to learn, to glean some wisdom from some upperclassmen. Some people that have been through high school, been through Sublime, they're just going to kind of look back on their Sublime experience and be like, hey, here's some things I learned. Here's how the Lord has grown me. Here's how I've, yeah, I've strengthened my walk with the Lord. And here's some advice I would give to you. So that's kind of what we're doing tonight. If you weren't here last week and you're like, what's going on? This, that's what we're doing tonight. So Dalton, or Dawson, we're going to start with you. I forgot. I forgot because we switched spots. <laughs> All right, so Dawson, we're going to start with you, man. All right. What was High Point, one of the best things you experienced in your time in Sublime? I think one of the highest points was a mission trip to Eleuthera going into my junior year. And where is that? Uh, it's in the Bahamas, yeah. Nice. It's a great trip. Um, either that or um, late night at Walking Wisely junior year. Popular, popular, yeah. Yeah, probably, yeah, that's popular probably, opinion, yeah. yeah. So what, it, what, what about those two things that just made it just life-changing or, or experience-setting for you in high school? Well, like, at those two points, it felt like I was, like, really, really close to God at that point. Okay. Like, I like that. Yeah. Now, we'll go from, like, high points to, like, some struggles. What's something, like, what, what was one of your greatest struggles, thing, one of the most difficult things you had to go through in your time in high school? What was that? I think, for me, it was uh, just dealing with anxiety. Gotcha. Not, like, not, like oh, grades or whatever, but it's more of, like, living up to people's standards mm -hmm. and, like, living up to coaches and parents' standards like that. I think that was, was huge. So then in that, which, I mean, I'm sure a lot of our students can resonate with that, in that whole, th in that burden, in that difficulty, what was the turning point for you that you felt like? Like, what kind of changed it? Well, I think my turning point was um, opening up to people because when you, it's probably this year or last year, um, I started talking to people about it, like talking to my friends and like even my parents and Paul, my small group leader. Hey, Paul. Um, yeah, I think that really made the turning point into this year. Like, it, yeah, I don't okay. know what I'm trying to say. That was, no, that was good. That was good. Yeah. All right, so opening up to others, talking to not only your friends and not only group people in your group, but like your parents mm -hmm. about it. You feel like right. that kind of like got it out of there. Mm -hmm. 
I'm kind of like that. I have to like process yeah. things with people. All right, so then what, since that was like the turning point, what would you say, what would be some advice that you would give with your whole experience, the whole gamut of experiences you've had in, in high school and sublime? What is some sage wisdom that you would give to these guys, to these underclassmen? I would say don't be afraid to be vulnerable. It's a, I was one of those guys that's like, oh, I don't have to say anything. It's not, it's not their problem. I'm just going to you know, put it on me to you know, fix the problem. I'm not going to give it to anybody else. But like when you talk to people and when you, you know, give it to God and give it or in a, let other people help you out and mm-hmm. lead you in the right direction, it changes everything. Mm. So That's good advice, man. Yeah. So then we talked about this a little bit. Give me just yeah. one last thing, kind of the walk-off, the walk-off here. Mm-hmm. What is one of the most important things you've learned about Jesus or learned about your walk with Jesus in your time here? So like like some, for you personally. Sublime, like, yeah. All right. um, so about a year or two ago, we went over a series called Straw, Sticks, and Bricks. And it was building foundations of friendships and relationships. And um, I think that really stuck with me to be able to build a firm foundation with a friendship or a relationship, wherever it is. Um, just starting with God. Mm-hmm. Starting with, you know, being truthful. And, yeah. I like that. That's good. All right. Yeah. Well, thank you for your sage wisdom. Thanks for no sharing. Problem. And I feel like you gave good advice. Let's give it up for Dawson. You're a wise man. All right. Dalton, my first question for you. I've, I've wanted to know this for, I would say years, but I've only been here for one year. So I, this is one thing I need to know about you. How did you get the nickname Beans? I don't know. <laughs> Everyone the origin has... of any great nickname. A complete mystery. Like I, <laughs> I don't know. It's been years. I still don't, I don't remember. Like, so it just it has no starting point that you can recall. Mm-mm. It's just been beans for the longest. Yeah. Like Miles. Okay. Miles Mile put it on me, and then it just kind of stuck. Oh, so Miles gave you that name. Well, it's, yeah, it started with Miles, and then, like, I don't know why. <laughs> so he just was like, hey, everybody, this is beans. Yeah. Really? Yes. And you didn't consent to this? You just went with it? I, okay. was, I was like a teeny little sixth grader. I didn't have any say. I had no rights. <laughs> well, mister, that's not my name. You didn't want to speak. Yeah, no. All right. Well, I mean, everyone loves you, man, so it worked out. Oh, thanks, it worked out. Thanks. So give us, um, give us maybe one of the most difficult things you went through in your high school experience. Um, so... This, I mean, this, everyone goes through, like, relationship and, the, and everything, but, like, um, so my sophomore year, well, my freshman, it started with my freshman year, so that's when my parents split, and that was, like, game changer, like, that was, like, a total, like, roller coaster right there, um, and it didn't really hit me, I kind of just, I bottled it up, and I threw it away, and, like, I, I didn't let it affect me, really, and I never thought about it, which didn't really help, because eventually I would explode, but, um, what happened was I started uh, dating this girl, and then I started basically idolizing that relationship. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I was upset, but I never showed it, but I kind of, like, m- m- reacted through the relationship. And it was, like, a really toxic relationship. Um, and then it ended badly, like, a year later, and that's when I started getting into some not-so-good things. And then I, fr- from the year like when my parents split until the next year, I was like a completely different person at like literally rock bottom. So, mm-hmm. so then what in that? So in that time period that kind of started with like the parents split and then this bad relationship. So what was kind of the turning point from that um, out of that? Well, I, the thing was I always thought that I was alone in that time. And, and I, I was kind of like Dawson. Like I never, like I refused to let people because I felt like it was burdening to other people to, right. to open up and to, to put that weight on their shoulders, but I was totally wrong. Um, I started uh, rebuilding a lot of friendships that I lost when I was just focusing on this one person, um, like my guy friend, as well as like making a bunch of friends through church. Mm. Um, and then one thing was uh, I, would, I stopped going to Sublime my sophomore year a lot. Like I, I, would, I would like make excuses every week to stop going, and then um, I wasn't even going to go to Walking Wisely that year. But then one of my friends, Chloe, ended up winning a raffle ticket. Like, out of, out because at Sublime used to be, like, huge back then, too. So there'd be, like, it wasn't, like, 50 kids. It was, like, 100. And yeah. then out of all the people, Chloe won a raffle ticket. And then out of the kindness of her heart, she gave it to me. So. Dang. <laughs> Where's she at? You've been mentioned in, like, everyone's story. I think half the people in the room are here because of you, Chloe. So, I mean, obviously because of Jesus, but also you helped. So. 
<laughs> so yeah, so that was, and that, and that was honestly like my best walk in YSA too. Like uh, I, I just, I felt loved by like everyone. And like, I felt like I, I realized that I had people there for me, even though like I felt like I li- was literally alone. So yeah. yeah. And then did you go on the trip to the Bahamas too? Were you on that? Yeah. Um, uh, she also convinced me to go on to the trip. <laughs> <laughs> you were a very persuasive person, okay? So that's, you went on that trip too? Yeah, yeah Positive yeah. experience? Um, well, okay. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, sounds like a story. <laughs> <laughs> so what happened was when me and um, my ex-girlfriend broke up, we didn't, we, we didn't break connections. Like we were still talking all the time and like it was still like toxic and like unhealthy yeah. relationship. But what had happened was it ended really badly, like ended, ended really badly the night that I was on my way to the airport. Like I was, I was here at church at 12 o'clock, like bawling my eyes out and everyone's like, oh my God, she's homesick. And I'm like, no, I'm heartbroken. <laughs> <laughs> they thought you were homesick before you even got on the plane? Yeah. Like, man, uh, cut the umbilical cord already. Yeah, Jeez. so it was a really good getaway. Like, it, like I literally had like my phone, like I, um, I had, I couldn't be in contact with anybody, so it was a good way to just literally disconnect from home and just be yeah. away and, like, connect with the people in the Bahamas as well as, like, just serving the Lord. So that was, like, a really great experience for me. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Well, as you get ready to transition to college and all that, coming out of high school, what sage wisdom would you give to the underclassmen here? Um, one thing I wanted to say is, like, uh, some people are always just so scared or, like, to, do, to be themselves sometimes or, or just, like, or, or not open to, like, uh, spontaneous, like being spontaneous, yeah. I guess. Um, and Spontaneity. Just, yeah, that's what I was trying to say. I got you. But just like putting yourself out you. there because like it took me forever to realize like the opinions of other people, I, they can affect you and, and, the, and like I'm guilty that like it does affect me sometimes but in reality like the opinions of people in high school aren't going to carry with you. Like, one, the day that you graduate, literally none of their opinions will matter to you again. And so, like, while you have time to be with your friends, just go out and be spontaneous and, like, just do things you can because you have time now. Like, when you're older, you're not going to have that time or opportunity. Like, um, me and my girlfriend, Bella, one time, like, before we were even dating, I literally told her one day, I was like, we're going on a trip to Chattanooga. And, like, she was like, uh, okay. And so, like, we, I just drove like two hours to Chattanooga and spent the day with her. Like just cause, just cause I wanted to. Like, it's a baller move, it's a baller move. <laughs> like it's things like that. Like you, you, you wanna make experiences with your friends and, and like you wanna, you wanna have those like happy moments and just cherish the times you have because like high school is so fast, especially your senior year. It's, it's gone by so fast. Like literally like, snapping right. your fingers. All right. So. I like it. All right, that's good advice. You guys take notes on that and also give it up for Dalton. It was good. It was good, and it was helpful. <laughs> That's really nice. You got some fans out there. All right, so, Connor, my man, let me ask you this. What has been one of your high points in your high school experience in Sublime? What's one of the best things you've experienced? In Sublime, right? Uh, Sublime, high school, whichever, but I don't know. If you feel like you want to make it more relative to Sublime, that works. Um, well, I feel like uh, a few years ago I was called to lead um, mm-hmm. in the ministry, and um, that was one of those high points when um, I joined Shift here mm-hmm. to help out because I've always wanted to help people find and follow Jesus mm-hmm. in the way like I have. Mm-hmm. So um, a few years ago I did that, and that really you know, really moved me to become a better Christian mm-hmm. and more of like a, um, a role model towards, you know, little kids yeah. so that next generation can be more influenced by what God has to do and you know and mm-hmm. um, I just thought that was just so important and uh, I feel like you know you have to have a call to ministry because there are ministers and yeah. different ministries that you know that don't see that way that may, maybe I do or like you do yeah. so um, I was very moved by that um, um, about a few years ago so that really was my very high point that's uh, awesome yeah. I do have to give some shout-outs to give some love here. Um, so every single person that's on stage serves in this church in some capacity. So like uh, Dawson and Dalton, they have a fifth-grade boys group, second service, in Shift, our middle school ministry. woo And they... Uh, <laughs> no, I actually got an email from a parent this week just saying how much their son loves. It's someone in your group and just how much their son loves coming to Shift. And I bragged on you guys and said how proud I was. 
So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> why are you surprised by this? Well, I was going to. That's why I just told you now in front of people to honor you guys, all right? But anyway, I was just telling them this was like last night. And so, I don't know. I'm just proud of you guys for that. You play down, or you play over there, and you have to appreciate that. You work with your family in the cafe. And then I feel like you're doing some random other stuff too, but I know you serve in the cafe really consistently. And then e- Ethan, for, if, for you guys who don't know, he actually works for us part-time here. And so he's just one of those dudes, he'll, he'll just do anything. Like he and I were moving stuff in here today. He helps set stuff up downstairs. He's just awesome, anything I need him to do. So I really just want to say, I wanted to use that as a quick transition point to just to say that I'm really proud of all you guys. I'm not just saying that like, I'm really legitimately proud of all you guys. And keep serving well. Just keep serving well. So anyway. So... Now that we talked about your high point, give us the struggle. Give us, what was that thing that was difficult in your high school experience, difficult in your years in Sublime? Oh, uh, that, that's a kind of a story, but I'll try to be quick. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. When I was little, um, me and my brother, twin brother Mason, uh, we were born at two pounds, and he was born at a pound and a half, and he almost didn't make it. And, Whoa, um, two pounds? Yeah. So um, it was really hard for, for me and Mason to grow up, and, you know, as a normal kids when we were young, and um, sometimes I like talking about this, but yeah. some things that I, um, that I go through and I kind of talk about in my small group is I have memory issues that I go through and it helps it hurts me towards my education a little bit, yeah. but I've overcome that. It's uh, the next point, I'm guessing, but, yeah. um, but I really had to overcome that. So when I was in uh, about fifth grade, um, I was over in East Cobb and you know how, you know how that is, but every kid is up here. <laughs> okay. So, um, I really had to, you know, while, you know, they were having summer, you know, hanging out with their friends, I was at home working, getting better at my, my, my material, my craft. Mm-hmm. And um, that was really hard for me because I always wanted to be a kid when I was little. Mm-hmm. And, um, and, and having my dad be a, a superintendent you know, over Cobb County and being a principal and all that kind of stuff, it was really hard because I, I knew a lot of people and a lot of people didn't know that about me. Mm-hmm. So when I would have conversations with other people, it was... It was, I wasn't trying to, I wasn't being fake, but mm-hmm. I was trying to understand what they were saying with it going out the other ear. And um, so that's why I got this piece of paper, because <laughs> I have to put my thoughts on a, a piece of paper to understand. But a lot of people, you guys, a lot of you guys don't know that if you know me, um, but um, I'm, I'm, I'm the normal average guru. But that would be the lowest point um, of my life that I had to go through is um, understanding understanding that kind of stuff, and I've had great people help me through that, and I'm a lot smarter than the average person, so okay. Well, okay, I would say. Okay. Oh, uh, dang. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, all right, all right. Yeah. So the turning point out of that was just, like, disciplining and applying yourself? Yeah, the turning point was definitely just, you know, having mentors and people to help me through that, and mm-hmm. I had to do a lot of the work uh, on my own just to, you know, get to the, you know, the average person of what their memory and, and all that kind of stuff is, mm-hmm. so... Um, I, I can't do it without people that you know that know Jesus and that really have, knows my heart mm-hmm. and where I'm leading to. So, yeah, it's awesome, man. Um, let's see what uh, what wisdom would you leave with the underclassmen? What would be some advice that you give to these guys as you're as you're moving forward? Um, hold on, you know me, I got my memory. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you just told us. Right? <laughs> We're with you now. We're with um, you so now. So I we think the you. the biggest thing is, you know. When I, when I go to different churches and um, do different things and help out with people, the one thing that people do as Christians, and I know a lot of Christians do that, is they create stereotypes for different people. And I think as, you know, this next generation that's coming up or your next crew that's coming up, I think that once you join a church, I think you should get to know that person and get to know their heart and, and, what the, and why they believe and how they get, got to believe uh, before you create the stereotype of, I know you, you're a Christian you know, not all Christians um, dive deep into the church, and mm-hmm. some, you know, some say they go to church, and some say they, they really love and love Jesus. So I would say don't create stereotypes uh, for people. Get to know people um, before you, um, you know, think of them one way or the other. That's great advice, man. Last question. We talked about this a little bit, but I know you've had some mentoring from this person. I want you to tell me something that you appreciate about one Jordan Mason. You know, um, I don't know if y'all know Jordan Mason, but um, um, he's been an inc- incredible 
mentor for me throughout leading worship and getting to know, you know, the instrument very well and getting to know how to reach people at different ages. And I think that's the most important thing that a mentor can do for you, especially at a young age at 19. I think that if you can target to any person in the room, I think that's very special. And he's really has really helped me get a job and, and ministry and, and continue my passion and love for for worship and he's I mean he's outstanding so if you would love a great mentor yeah. and a great person to talk to and be there for you for anything that you need Jordan Mason is your guy uh, 100% what's up what's up I like that I like that all right so before we move to you Cal we're gonna um we're gonna do with a little intermission question that I asked last week it's one of my favorite questions to ask any human being on the planet you're stranded on a desert island, okay? How'd you get there? We don't know. That's where their story starts, okay? And so, like, like, like your nickname, Beans, we don't know the origin of this story, but we just know you're on a desert island. You can pick one book, one album, and one movie, okay? And book, we'll all just say the Bible, okay? Like, we're, we're, you can have the Bible plus one, plus some other book. Go for it. Lightning fast. Well, I don't really read, so... <laughs> Maybe like a magazine. Fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish, or something like that. Okay, you want to read that like a thousand times. I mean, it's an easy read. Yeah. Okay, it is an easy read. Um, yeah, album. Yeah. Um, I'd probably say uh, Live at Folsom Prison by Johnny Cash. Whoa, throwback. Okay, okay. Um, Johnny Cash fans in the room. Okay. Didn't see that coming. And then a uh, movie. Yeah. Mm. Probably Top Gun. Top Gun. I'm you got some classic. throwback picks. I like it. Yeah, All right. Yeah. That's a solid, solid picks. All right, go for it. One fish, two fish, red fish. <laughs> <laughs> so when you go to college, you're going to be a lit major? Is that what you're going to do? <laughs> Who are you into? Emily Dickinson or Dr. Seuss? Who you got? Yeah, this is, okay, so for my book, I'd bring like, you know those like encyclopedias with like animals and stuff? <laughs> it's just, I mean, like, like any encyclopedia would have an animal if the animal's name started with the letter that. Oh, no. So it'd be like a, a, a lions, llamas. No, 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 no. It's like aquatic animals, but mainly like otters. Like just pic- just so I have pictures of otters. So like, like that's like my favorite animal. So Where, where's Bella? She no, she did, stole she stole that from did you me. Say that was your she stole animal? that. She stole that yeah, from me. Yeah, you said that was your look, spirit animal last look, week. Look, look, she stole that from me. That's me. <laughs> that's me. <laughs> that's all that's me. Um. And then with album, it would probably be like, I don't know if you, Love is Rage by Lil Uzi. Okay. okay. <laughs> so it's just, it's, just a, it's just a great album and like like mixture of everything. Okay. Um, or just Marvin's Room, just because I'm sad that I'm alone on the island all the time. Oh, yeah. I mean, you would be by yourself, so sometimes <laughs> yeah. you want to get into that yeah. sad lonely feeling. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. I get um, it. I get it. And then movie. So I, I like a lot of movies, but like I mainly watch like, like military, like war movies, and okay. so it's like, like, uh, uh, thirteen hours. It's uh, oh, Jim yeah. from The Office. So it's a, yeah, it's a really good movie. The guy who plays Cal in the movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So good yeah. picks. All right, Connor, what do you got? Book, album, movie. For my book, I would choose. Um. So I'm reading this book right now. It's called uh, Are You Meant for Ministry? Oh. Uh, and uh, like I said, I'm going into ministry, so I really am ex- inspired by that book, so I would be reading a lot. Yeah. Okay. But what if you read the book, decide you are meant for ministry, and then it seems like it's superfluous because you already figured it out? Then I'm lost. Oh, I'm just, man. I'm just lost. In all right, all right. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then you have your Bible to read. Okay. Yeah. Second, second thing, album. Favorite album? Um, I'm a big country kind of guy, so Florida Bama. Florida Bama album. Okay, Chessie. okay. Yeah. All right, and then LBA. finally, what what movie? <laughs> what movie? Um, <laughs> Kicking and Screaming yes. or Talladega Nights. Talladega Nights. Oh, sorry. I get behind that movie. I get behind that movie. <laughs> Kicking and Screaming. Uh, Bad Boys 2. <laughs> <laughs> Bad Boys 2. All right. Cal, what do you got? What do you got? Uh... For book, I'm going to be honest, I absolutely hate reading, so I would not be bringing a book <laughs> besides the Bible. So you're like, you choose death over having to have a book? Okay. Yes. Wow. <laughs> Jeez. All right. Um, and then album, I don't, like, don't really listen to music like that, but I, but I would probably. 
<laughs> but um, I probably would bring like. <laughs> All right, go ahead, what? I'd probably bring like the uh, the Guardians of the Galaxy soundtrack. That's a good one. That's a good. That's good. That's good. That's yours. Okay. That's good. That's good. All right, and then movie. Um, so movie. I'm like a kid at heart, so I would totally be bringing Toy Story 2. Toy Story 2? Okay. Why 2? Why 2? Of all the Toy Stories, why 2? Because 2's the best one. Okay. I mean, I mean it's, got, it's got Stinky Pete in it. It's got Stinky Pete. All right. Lastly, Ethan, what do you got? What book? Do you hate reading as vehemently as the rest of these guys? I hate reading. Oh, my gosh. Do you guys all go to Hillgrove? Is that a <laughs> There's a common denominator here. Uh... I'm probably going to go, like, the literal side. I think it was Jenna that said it last week. Probably that survival book. Dude, I was waiting for that answer. That was the best it's answer. It's the most literal answer. Oh. Yeah, that's a genius answer. Why survival book. Uh, <laughs> but what if you don't have the money for the survival class? Yeah, there you go. All right. So then what's your, what's your album? Uh, probably go Greta Van Fleet. What is it? Wait, what is it? So Greta... <laughs> No. Yeah, Creed. No, Creed's your answer. Creed. Creed is the answer. <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll go with Creed. <laughs> okay, hours of entertainment. Okay, and then what's your movie? Uh, Space Jam. Yes! <laughs> Finally, an answer I can get behind. Yes! Actually, no, take that back. Album, Space Jam soundtrack. Yes! The album. I was listening to that last week. It's from like 1996. I still listen to it. Still it still slaps. Oh, my gosh. Great answer. It still slaps. <laughs> At the time, they wouldn't have said that, but yes, it does now. All right, Cal, you're up, man. What, um, give me, well, let's get right to what has been one of the most difficult things you've experienced in your high school career, if you will. Um, I would probably say transitioning from middle school to high school because, yeah. I mean, my dad works at the high school, and so I've been around there for a really long time, but still like transitioning and finding like a friend group that like I know that I can rely on and that I know like isn't going to get me in trouble either. Right. So that like was probably one of the hardest things about high school, just like finding that good group of friends just like right in the beginning. And I was fortunate enough to get that my second semester of ninth grade year. So Gotcha. So then, so your turn, turning point out of that was finding this group of friends. Yes, and like we're probably like the best group of friends. Ethan's in our friend group, and um, I mean, like we went to the beach over spring break, right? And like zero problems whatsoever. So no drama. No, no, no drama. Yeah. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But. So then, now this might be your sage wisdom and advice of it. So we can just skip over that question, but maybe you have something else. But what would be some advice, just since we're talking about friends and finding that good group of core friends, what would be some advice specifically on friends and finding friends and having a friend group that you would give to underclassmen? Um, I would probably say just being patient and trusting in the Lord. Like, don't feel like you have to immediately find friends, like, the first day of school. And, like, if you continually just pray about it and just trust in God, then it will eventually happen. Like, I have on my uh, nightstand right by my bed, I have a block that says time changes everything. So, I mean, like, it'll, it'll work out eventually. You just have to trust in the Lord. So. I like that. And you said for you it happened second semester. Second semester, yes. That's great, yeah. Cool. And now you got this, like, tight-knit group of friends. Oh, yes. And you feel like moving forward, like, you guys will just always stay in touch. Right. That's awesome. Yes. Cool. And where are you going off to school again? Uh, Mississippi State Mississippi. University. Okay. Yes. That's awesome. All right, so then, so... Every single person up here is in the same uh, small group, with the same small group leader. Uh, where's Paul at? Where's Paul? Where are you at, Paul? All right, stand up, wave at the people. Stand up, wave at the people. Stand up, wave at the people. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I want you to tell me something, just like, like you do with Jordan. I want you to tell me something that you like and appreciate about Paul. Um, well, I appreciate how Paul is constantly there for us. I mean, like... If we have anything that we need to talk about, we know that we can always go to Paul. And um, he welcomes us into his home, like, all the time, pretty much, just to hang out and fellowship with each other. And um, so he's just very accountable, and that's what I love about him. So It's awesome. 
You told me you guys play a lot of, you play some Halo too. Oh, yes. Yeah, How's Paul's Halo Paul, game? Paul talks a lot of trash. He just gets every time. <laughs> Paul has no Halo game? He's really so bad. And he can't say nothing about it. it <laughs> Does Paul know he's bad at Halo? No, he thinks he's so he's terrible. <laughs> he thinks he's good, buddy. Yeah. Okay. Does he trash talk or? Uh, yes. But, but How the was thing that? Is, but the thing is, like, Paul will trash talk and then we'll trash talk. And, and then he'll, and then like he'll just give it right back to us. So <laughs> we just go so back bad. and forth. Last time his controller caught on fire. Like he's that bad. <laughs> what did you do to catch a controller on fire, Paul? <laughs> dude, I can't hear him. I can't hear him, dude. I can't hear him. Oh my gosh, so he's moving so fast. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, guys, let's give it up for Cal. The sage wisdom, sage advice. Last. But not least, we have my boy Ethan over here. So, Ethan, you have a, you have a unique story for a Sublime student. Tell, uh, tell the people how you came to Sublime. Uh, so, when I was younger, around elementary school, we uh, started really just, we kind of lost touch with our old church. and so You we just, being your family. My your family, family, yes. Yeah. Uh, so, we started kind of like church hopping around, just seeing which one fit. Um, I just picture you guys literally hopping like bunnies <laughs> down the road to different churches. I don't know. Sorry. I'm and, a child. And my sister got invited to North Metro by one of her friends. And my mom was like, okay, we should probably try this church because my sister went a couple times and she said she really liked it. So really up in like fourth grade, we, we all came here and I just kind of graduated through the system. You're product of the system? <laughs> product of the system. Yeah. So you just kept moving up from fourth grade on, right? Yeah, fourth grade on, <laughs> all the way up the ladder. And then you have to get demoted, too, because, right, you came to Sublime, and then they split into yeah, shift, and that, you had that, to do, 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 so back down. Because before shift happened, it was Sublime was 6th through 12th, and then, like, it was, like, first semester of sixth grade year, they just kind of cut it, and then they... And then you, you got... Got you demoted, shift. yeah. <laughs> got demoted. All right, so that's how you came to Sublime. I, I love hearing that because I like, like, a strong succession plan, you know? Like, that's something we, we work really hard at as a church is just to have, you know, the, always a next step to move up. And so, like, we'll have some seventh graders from shift moving up to eighth grade next year. So I love that and that you've stayed the course that whole time. Now, give me, uh, give me one of your high points in Sublime. Like, give me one of the, the best experiences you've had. Could be a, a teaching, a song, an experience outside of Sublime or at Sublime, walking wisely. What is it? It's definitely walking wisely. Uh, it's going to be the 11th grade year late night session. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, what made that such a high point? Because uh, that was the first year that we had Paul as our, our small group leader. Shout out to Paul. Shout out to Paul again. Uh, throughout throughout like our entire like sort of like development and like going up the ladder, we've had like somewhere between 10 to 11 small group leaders. Whoa. <laughs> and <laughs> Paul was Paul is the second longest to stick. And he's currently two years now. Two Thanks, years Paul. in. Two years in, Paul. Two years in. Two years in. Uh, so Paul, that first year, really just kind of, he, he figured out what situation that we, we had and what we've gone through with, with the amount of small group leaders we had. And mm -hmm. he just took that opportunity and really, like, leaned into all of us and then just kind of opened up. That's awesome. We appreciate you, Paul. Love you, Paul. You're my boy. You're my special boy. <laughs> now, let me ask you this, the, the fun question. What's been one of the most difficult things you've gone through in your high school experience? I'd say definitely transitioning into high school. So sort of like when I was in middle school, I always try to like fit in sort of you know, like that whole like fear of missing out sort of deal. So I try to fit in in different groups and then just always just like not really sticking into them. But so that was around eighth grade years when I was just like, this is this is ridiculous. So I just started becoming a little bit more antisocial and just really stuck to myself and just kind of got to a point where I just didn't really want to come to Sublime anymore, but I did out of just, like, just trying to save face. Mm -hmm. So, and then moving and transitioning into high school, again, found that really good group of friends. So this Cal. is kind of the turning point yeah. for you. Yeah. So, so finding that really good group of friends and then just really sticking in and just, it's just a great group, group of friends. It's awesome. So that's been, like, your support group. Though. Yeah. What is it? You and I have talked about it. There's 14 of you guys or something? 14, yeah. 14. That's a good crew. That is a good, I don't think I know 14 people, okay? So that's, a, that's impressive. So 14, 14. 14. 
And so that was like the game changer. So similar, you guys kind of have a similar story yeah. now. And in your, you're in the same friend group, which so is awesome. So Cal, Cal joined first, and then I'd always walk past because I was that kid that, you know, just went straight to first block, didn't really want to talk to anybody. But I saw Cal and a few other people that I had from first semester, ninth grade. And I was like, okay, I'll try this out. So I just went a couple weeks and just talked with them and then just stuck ever since. That's awesome. That's awesome. I like that, man. So then what, um, what advice would you give transitioning out of Sublime, what advice would you give to the underclassmen? What's I'd something that they can learn? Definitely don't be afraid to apologize because grudges definitely kill relationships and that's it's just toxic. And so you've had to face that in your time yeah. in high school. It, and then how, so how long did you had something happen in a relationship? How mm -hmm. long did that like how, how long did that last? So I had a friend in ninth grade. This was like one of the friend like one of the first friends that I made and he just kind of split off went to like the wrong group just started partying a lot drugs alcohol and that sort of deal and i tried to confront him about it and he he wasn't having it so we just kind of got in a little bit of a heated argument and it's been it was like two and a half years of silence before we talked again but then so that's so in between that time is that when you kind of had this like the lord showed you this thing about like oh i need to not hold grudges or i need to yeah it was um i think it was February of last year, we, we had Michael gave a sermon about apologies and, like, not having excuses and apologies, and it really just opened me up to say, like, okay, I really messed up with this relationship. I'm not going to pursue it again, but I'm going to apologize and make amends. That's awesome. So you, so you took the, the onus to go and approach your friend about it? Yeah. And they were receptive on that? They were. It's, I explained the situation, like, hey, we don't have to be friends, but I just want to say I apologize for what happened. It's really mature, man. It's really mature. Yes, take notes on that. Take notes on that. That's important. All right. Well, let, let me end with this. Give me one of the most encouraging things that you've experienced in your time in Sublime. Something that's that immensely encouraging to you. Definitely coming through the system with all this, like, the amazing senior class. We've just really just bonded and then leaned into each other. That's awesome. You guys do have a solid class. And I feel like you guys are all, like, tight, which I like. Everyone on the couch knows each other, likes each other, gets along. So that's a good answer. So that's been the most encouraging thing yeah. you experienced. That's awesome. Well, uh, I think we should uh, give it up one more time for all the seniors that are up here today. Give it up. For real, though, I am proud of you guys. Thank you for just investing in, in this ministry, like here on Wednesday nights. Thank you for how you guys serve so well in Shift. I mean, you guys are super reliable, and I appreciate that more than you even know. And like, what did you just dab? There was like a quarter dab on it. All right, I didn't see anything. But yeah, I just thank you for, like, for leading out in shift. And thank you. I know you guys are down in the cafe all the time serving. And Ethan, I really appreciate you coming on board, man, for real. Like, you, get, you do a lot of stuff that I don't know how I would have margin or time to do that. So I really appreciate everything you've done. So I want to pray over you guys. I'm going to pray for you guys. And then we're going to wrap this thing up.